Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. The Magic Pillowcase video has been our most watched video of all times. You have watched that video more than a million times, and along the way you've asked questions about directional fabrics, different sizes for pillows, maybe travel size or king size, because the original video only covered standard size. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to make the travel size. Super cute, versatile for adults and kids alike. In this video, I'll be covering the standard size pillowcase, both for non-directional and directional fabric, and how much fabric you'll need to buy, as well as giving you the necessary sizes to make the king size. So there will be a free download that will be part of this video. You can always pick up our downloads at the Shabby Fabrics homepage at the very bottom. Click on free downloads, you'll find the magic pillowcase there in the various sizes, as well as so many other videos for wool projects, cotton projects, DIY, and so much more. And if you haven't already subscribed to YouTube, just do that right now, and that way you'll be the first ones to know about any, any new videos that we're filming here at Shabby Fabrics. So in the original video that was done, it feels like a lifetime ago, I showed you fabric that had a repeat where the design was running along the selvage. And let me show you what I mean by that. First off, is this adorable or what? These are absolutely so much fun to make, picking out your three fabrics and, you know, with someone special in mind. And I'll be teaching you today to how to do French seams, which means on the inside of your pillowcase, you have no exposed seams. All of those seams are tucked inside so you can wash your pillowcase over and over and you won't have any fraying. These are just so much fun. I think this is Hello Big World. We've done it in the light blue as well as the pink here with a beautiful ombre accent strip. So much fun. So let me put that aside. Let's talk about the print of certain fabrics because that'll determine how much fabric you need to buy. As I said in the original video that I did, we talked about three measurements, three, nine, and 27. What is that all about? Well, the um, pillow is made up of three sections. You have the body of the pillow, you have the cuff. I can, in fact, I'll refer back to this one a little bit easier for you to see. The body of the pillow, right here, the cuff, and then the accent strip. This was cut to three inches with, by width of fabric, nine inches by width of fabric, 27 for the body of the pillow. Remember I said three times nine is 27. It makes it really easy to remember. But there's a, there's a, there's a caveat to that. And what is that caveat? And that is, those measurements are accurate as long as your design is running parallel to your selvage. So this is, we're going to keep the original video up there because it's just, it's kind of our history of shabby fabrics. But this is kind of another level so that no matter what fabric you may fall in love with, you'll still be able to, to make a magic pillowcase, but you might be needing some different um, lengths of fabric in order to achieve the pillowcase. So getting back to what we talked about, if your design has your horse or your scene kind of galloping along the selvage, parallel to the selvage, just like you're seeing, you'll only need 27 inches of fabric. We, this is a little bit longer than that. I think this is 30. I just cut some off a bowl of fabric. Now, you are cutting that, and that's width of fabric, right? And a standard width of fabric in today's fabric is about 44 inches, 43 to 45, somewhere in that area. Now let's say that you find a print such as this, and let's look at the selvage. If you're trying to analyze a fabric, I encourage you to unroll the bowl of fabric. It could be maybe in your stash, it could be in a quilt shop, so that you know whether the design is running along the selvage, or is it running per perpendicular to the selvage, which is the case with this print. This is super cu cute. This is from Susie B. This is absolutely adorable. We did some travel size pillows. I think we're going to be doing today. We'll be working with this one, making the magic pillowcase. But this has the design running perpendicular. So what does that mean? So let's think back. The original video had us cutting 27 by width of fabric, which was a piece of fabric that was about 27 by 44. Well, there was a time where I thought, well, 
if the design doesn't run parallel to the selvage, it can't work. It, it can't be a magic pillowcase. That's when I realized it can be a magic pillowcase, but maybe I have to reverse those measurements. What do I mean by that? Let's take this one out of the way. This is how we did it in the original video. Of course, we used a different print, but it too was running parallel with the selvage. If that's the case, we'll be cutting 27 by width of fabric. Today, this print is running perpendicular. So now I have to cut my length, the 44, which I believe I've done ahead of time. Let's have a peek here. Let's see if I actually did cut that to that. Let's check that out. Yes, so we have this at 44. But just like we cut the other one to 27 by width of fabric, now we're cutting our length by 44. If you're shopping in a quilt shop, that's going to be a yard and a quarter of fabric is what you'll need to be able to do one pillowcase. And you will have some fabric left over because we're going to be cutting this by the 44. But then as we turn the fabric, we'll be cutting this to our 27. So in that instance, what you can be doing once you remove your selvage, or you could leave that on, either way, we'll be trimming that, we'll be squaring everything up anyway. So let's, I'm gonna measure from my left. And let's go, actually, you know, I am gonna go ahead and remove that selvage. That way I don't really have to worry about that. Now you could go ahead and fold your fabric so you're not having to, it is a lot, it's a lot longer piece of fabric, right? You're used to dealing with the fabric folded in half. So if you do choose a fabric that has a design running perpendicular to your selvage, you're just gonna need some additional space and that's fine. Let's go ahead and clean off that selvage. All right, now I'm going to open up my fabric I've got my 44 going this way. And we're going to cut 27. So I'm just going to line up. All right, 27 is going to take me to 39. And I'm just going to kind of sight where I'm going to be cutting. So I can see that's going to be kind of at the top of this hammock all the way that you kind of sight where you're going to do it because it's blind. I can't see the measurements on my mat anymore. So let's double check. 39. I'm going to be at the top of that hammock every time. And as I get here, I'll just slide my ruler up, draw the fabric down toward myself. Now this could just go into your stash, make some cute little extra projects with this. Maybe a cute uh, little accent pillow. Of course, a pillowcase and an accent pillow are different, so it's kind of nice to have a coordinating project. So now I'm kind of back to Let's get that all put together. Let's measure and see what we've got here. So we've got our 27, and we know this is our 44 going this way, okay? So this is like our fabric here. Hopefully you're understanding this is kind of the same concept. Now this, was, this one's not quite, this one is not 27 but I, if I trim this to, to my exact 27, do you see how it's basically the same size of fabric, but now I've been able to use my fabric no matter what direction it's printed. I just need a piece that's 27 by 44, so I have that now. So this is still three inches, and this is still going to be nine no matter what. So those are ready to go. Just like in previous videos, how we line everything up here. 
If you've seen our previous video, the first thing I have you do is line up the folds and line up the, and we're going to trim off that quote salvage. Now we already know the salvage is gone. We took care of that. But we need, we need all three of these pieces to be the same length of fabric. So they're all folded. All of those folds are exactly stacked on top of each other. It looks like I'll be right about there to remove all. Of course, I need to go to whatever selvage comes the soonest. That's going to determine where I'll make my cut. Okay, so now I have three pieces, all this very same length. Perfect, now I'm ready to go. Step one will be your accent strips. Accent strips, singular, excuse me. <laughs> in the travel pillow, they're two separate pieces, but in the larger pillow, it's one. Go ahead, wrong sides together, and press. Now while I'm pressing, one of the things I wanted to mention, I did, I mentioned this in the travel pillow, um, is the, the full color guide that we're putting together, it's just, this is not something that is necessarily intuitive to people, making the magic pillowcase is especially as we get into the layering process of how you actually layer the, the three pieces together, isn't something that stays top, top of conscious. If it's been a long time since I've made a magic pillowcase, I literally go back and watch my own video because I'm like, how did that layer together again? Um, because it's easy to forget. So for that reason, we're putting together a full color photo step-by-step -step, uh, pattern booklet of how to make the three different sizes of the pillow. The travel pillowcase is made a little bit differently than this. And then you'll also have the step-by-step -step instructions for standard and the measurements as well for king. Consequently, for the king size, what I'm doing today is exactly the same process. The measurements are just a little bit different. Those are in the download. It's still three inches for the accent, nine for that, and 36 is for the body of your king size pillow. So those are the measurements. So if you don't want to go to the download, you'll be following the same process I'm doing today, but using three, nine, and 36. So bear with me while I clean off my table. We need some space. This takes a lot of room. We'll get our ruler out of the way. All right. The layering, if you've watched the travel pillowcase video, this is different than that. So don't think we're gonna layer the same. We'll start with our cuff, laying that out. Now I'm using a big mat, of course, it's, it's a little, um, it's nice to be able to line up with a line. But if you don't have that, grab a kitchen table, maybe a floor you've cleaned off, wherever you have space to lay these layers out. Next will come the body of the pillowcase. And that'll be right sides up. Everything is going to be right sides up. Lining that up exactly with the top of our cuff. And then with our accent strip, now you've got two sides. You've got the folded side here, and you have the two sides that are raw and open. That's the side that'll be up. The two sides that are raw and open will be up. Lining everything up perfectly. If you find, like I just noticed that strip might be just a little bit longer. We did our best to trim everything I think we'll be okay. If you did notice something's just a little bit long by maybe an eighth of an inch, you could trim that. You'll, you'll also be able to trim that kind of after the fact. 
But if you notice that strip was just a little bit longer, we'll lay it out. Oh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, maybe just a touch long. Right there. I'm just going to trim that. Perfect. Okay. Just ever so slightly. Three layers. You've got your cuff, the body, your accent, everything right side up. And we're going to bring up the bottom now. I kind of fold and then begin to roll. It takes a lot of space. I'm even bumping into my sewing machine at this point. So I'm going to scoot down just a touch. And just begin to roll. And roll to about there. You want to stay clear of your accent strip because what's going to happen now, you want to stay back away from it, is I'm going to bring this up to the edge. And I want to make sure I don't catch that roll up in there as I sew all of these layers together. I'm going to pin here. I'm going to pin in the middle, making sure I'm catching all of those layers. So be sure to check that. A couple of my other pins in there I don't want. Let's take those out of there. And let's pin in the end. You can use Wonder Clips for this too. You don't have to use pins. The whole idea is that you're getting all of those layers sandwiched just stacked right on top of each other. These are so fun to make for kids going to camp, uh, you know, a special birthday one. You know, birthday fabric's fun to find. It's hard to find. You know, I see a lot of fabric, and I rarely get to see that. But if I ever do come upon that, that might be a really neat fabric to make a special pillowcase so that when your child's having a birthday, it just be kind of just special for them to have a special pillowcase on their day. Okay, I'm just making sure all the layers, I'm trying to keep my head out of the way so you can see what I'm doing, are just stacked. Here's what, I'm, here's what I'm trying to avoid. It's very easy because there's so many layers for me to pin this together and this has scooted down. You see how that can happen? That's why you do want to double check that you've got all of those layers and one's not sneaking underneath. Now I'm going to turn this over before I go to the sewing machine just to make sure nothing kind of sneak, snuck under. See how that did right there? So that's why we check. I'm going to unpin that, scoot that down, and now I will repin that. Let's look at that now. See how now it's all together? That one kind of snuck under a little bit too. Let's just fix that one. There we go. You definitely don't want to miss that layer. I'm going to bring that, just fix that one as well. Now when we go to the sewing machine, when you begin and when you end, be sure to reinforce several stitches because as you pull all this fabric out, if that's not reinforced, it can come undone. We'll be using a standard quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to put a couple more pins in. Let's get started. Okay, now here's the magic. Here's why we call it the magic pillowcase. Now you'll, you have your cuff here. Everything's inside. 
just grab onto that cuff and begin to pull. And just start to work everything out of the middle. That's why it was so important to reinforce the beginning and the end. Because it there is a lot of stuff happening here. These are so fun to make. Get my iron heating up. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. And isn't it just adorable? So, so cute. Now you'll want, this will want to kind of have a tuck here. See how it just kind of wants to kind of tuck under? So you'll just, just kind of want to pull that out so that there's no tuck and give it a nice press. Now you would expect to do that, of course. I've got a wool pressing mat here. I love how that just can take so much heat and especially on seams with pieced blocks not so much with the magic pillowcase, but on piece blocks. I just love how it, all the seams lie so flat with a wool pressing mat. So again, just kind of pull it, smooth it, and we'll press it. Now, if you're going to be using the pillowcase versus it being kind of more just decorative, because I know that's going to exist too. Somebody wants to do... Um, one that's kind of just on a display and a guest bed, but maybe is never really going to be used. You might want to skip a step that I'm going to show you to save time. However, I like to do what's called French seams. I'll show you what you can do if you, if you want to skip that step. You don't think you're ever going to really wash this pillow. Of course, I'd keep pressing that, but just to save time, if you... Let, let me show you what the pillow is going to look like. That's what the pillow is going to look like. So, of course, to, gosh, I've got to just press that. That's going to just drive me crazy if I don't press that out. Let me do that real fast. Not funny how we are as quilters. We just have to have everything pressed and perfect. If you're, don't worry, if you don't, if you don't mind having raw seams on the inside of your pillow, you could simply go right sides together, sew a quarter inch all the way around, turn this right side out, and you're done. You will have raw edges, as I said. That seam will be on the inside of the pillow. That could be OK for you if you're not going to be washing it. Um, but if you are going to be washing that, or you don't like those seams to be raw on the inside, then your next step will be to bring the wrong sides together, right sides out, will line up our accent piece. See that? Top to bottom. We're lining up everything, really. You're lining up the entire pillow. And we'll be sewing here and here. So let me just line that up. Now, consequently, do you see this little part that's hanging over just a touch? Let's, let me just address that right now. See how that's hanging over just a touch? You know what I do with that? I fix it. I want everything to be lined up so that when I bring those wrong sides together, everything is lined up. Does that change my pillow by maybe an eighth of an inch? Probably. And you know what? It's going to be just fine. These don't fit. Just like any pillowcase, there's that little bit of that wiggle room in a pillowcase. So you're, you're OK to trim like I just did if you need to. Let's put some pins in. We certainly want those accent strips to come together beautifully. And of course, the top of the pillow itself down in our corners. And we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance. It's going to be a little bulky coming over this area with our accent. So if you 
have a machine that struggles with that, you might need to ease it over that area. Let's get going with our quarter inch seam allowance. At the corner here, you can either sew right off or you can sew till you're about a quarter inch away, stop and pivot. I think I'll stop here. I think I went a little bit past that. I think I will back up a stitch or two. Actually, let's just sew right off so you can see how that works. Nothing wrong with doing that. We'll just start again. Coming down this side. my stitches right there. So you might be thinking, how is this possibly going to work? I now have seams on the outside of my pillow. What are you doing? Well, with French seams, what you'll do now with your ruler or a pair of scissors, I like to use a ruler and a rotary cutter because I can lay my ruler now right along the line I just stitched, an eighth of an inch. So I'm, I'm going to now trim my quarter inch seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch by placing my ruler right on that stitch line at the eighth of an inch and I'm going to trim away the eighth of an inch that's left over and do the same thing moving this direction. Now we turn our pillowcase wrong side out. So let's do that. And to get those corners out, I like to use my tool here in the corners. I love this tool. This is a clover tool, and it just helps me get those things out. See how that just gets in the corner so perfectly? This tool right here, what I love about it is when I have a 90 degree corner like this, this is my, this is my friend. And when I'm doing something that has like a, a turn, an arch in it, I use this end. So I, I just can't recommend those, that tool enough, the versatility and its effectiveness is fantastic. Okay, what's this next step with this whole French seam? Well, the side that has the roll, you don't have to do anything. So we'll be working on this side. The side that has the seam is the side we're working on. And what's our goal? Our goal is, as you can see, notice how it kind of wants to dive in there. Well, we need to bring that out Get rid of our extra threads here. You could use this tool again. Get your pins handy. The whole idea is to get that seam that we just trimmed, the eighth of an inch, all the way to the end. See that? Don't let it dive in. Once you have that, we're going to pin. And we'll keep pinning. I just kind of feel it, roll it with my fingers, and pin. Oh, I must have left a pin in there when I turned it. 
Yes, I did. <laughs> like, why is that not smooth? Okay. There we go. And I'll keep working my way down. Now that this is pinned on the two sides, let's head over to the sewing machine. We'll sew a standard quarter inch seam allowance, reinforcing in the beginning and the end as you would expect. All of our seams are enclosed. I love that. Isn't that cool? So French seams, you know, whether you're doing pillowcases, handbags, I've seen a lot of handbag patterns where it ends up with seams on the inside that are raw. Well, if you're going to use that bag, if you're going to wash that bag, you're going to end up with the same thing of problems with um, potentially um, frayed edges. Of course, if you've got a surgery, you can always do that, but not everybody has a serger. So French seams are a fantastic way to close a seam on any project, and especially on a magic pillowcase. So let's turn this right side out. Again, I'll use my tool to help me get those corners out. And this is so much fun. So this is kind of a uh, Magic Pillowcase 2.0, so to speak. It's the same process that I showed you before, but in the previous video, I didn't uh, teach you how to address, you know, if your fabric is, repeat is moving in one direction, how much do I need? If my fabric is moving in another direction, how much do I need? And of course, if your fabric is what's considered non-directional, then you really only need to have the 27 inches by width of fabric and that will be plenty to get you a beautiful pillowcase. And as we said, your uh, accent piece, three inches, and your cuff is nine. Met, uh, the king size are just a little bit more fabric to do that, and that'd be cute as well on, of course, king size pillows. So that's what our pillowcase looks like. Don't forget, we do have the full color, step-by-step, uh, photos of all three of those pillowcases. So if you just want to have that as a handy guide, maybe on a quilt retreat, or maybe while you're just out sewing with a bunch of friends, be sure to pick that up. I know this was a longer video. Thanks for hanging in there. I'd love to hear from you. And we want to see your magic pillowcases. Send that into social media to our Facebook group. We'd love to show off your pillowcases. So I'll see you on the next Shabby Fabrics video.